Hi, my name is Eric Butterbaugh, and the activity that we'll look at now is called Exploring Lunar Phases. And I love this activity because it, it really shows the relationship between math and science, and it highlights functions, which are um, really, really a key concept in Algebra 1. So the first thing that students need to understand is that as the Earth orbits the Sun and as the Moon orbits the Earth, that one side is always going to be illuminated by the Sun. And we see that here in this image that is courtesy of NASA. And you'll see that it's actually a color image on the handheld. We can insert a color image on the handheld, which is it really brings some life to these activities. Um, this activity is paperless, so what we see here is um, just a, an overview of what to expect on the next page, of how to interact with it. And we also see some questions that students can consider. What patterns do you observe, and how does the moon's position affect its phase? So what we have here is the orientation of the sun, the earth, and the moon. And just like in the NASA image, we see that no matter where the moon is located, one side of it is always illuminated. And we also have a percentage here. So what this is telling us is that um, when the moon is in this location, about 74% of it is illuminated. And that, that actually corresponds to the image that we see here. So as students drag the moon around the Earth, we also see some new vocabulary words. And these, these aren't specific to an Algebra I classroom, but my experience has been that students enjoy learning new vocabulary. And this vocabulary is important because this first word is always talking about uh, increasing or decreasing. Right, so here, the moon is waxing because its illumination is increasing. It's waning because its illumination is decreasing. All right, and increasing and decreasing values are really recurring themes throughout algebra. And then we have crescent, which means less than 50%, as we see here by the percentage, and gibbous, which means more than 50%. And if we want to interact with the animation, we can press play. And we can see how everything relates. Now, um, the next page we have that same simulation, but it is connected to a graph. And graphs are really, really useful in algebra because they allow us to see patterns. And they allow us to analyze um, some of the numbers that we see. So we've got that same simulation, and we see a point that's moving along the graph. We have our independent and dependent variables. So a little after day nine, we see that the moon is about 70% illuminated, or 73%. The illumination is increasing and then decreasing. So we could talk about rate of change here, which is a huge concept. Because most of what students see in Algebra 1, um, usually they see straight lines. But this, is, this graph is certainly not a straight line. It's increasing and it's decreasing. And that pattern repeats from month to month. So we could start to ask some really, really interesting questions. You know, if we knew, if we knew what phase the moon is today, students could determine the phase of the moon on their birthday. But students often have a question here because if the sun is over here and the Earth is in between the moon and the sun, why doesn't the Earth block out the moon, right? we would think that the moon, we wouldn't be able to see it when in fact we actually have a full moon. So I would encourage students to consider that with this diagram. All right, and what we see here, it's basically a, um, 
it's not quite three-dimensional, but we've got the moon that's orbiting around the Earth. We'll have to use our imagination just a little bit there. But we can change the angle of orbit. And if we do that, we see that it's certainly possible for the moon to be on the far side of the Earth but still have um, still be able to receive light from the sun. Right. So we can change both of those orbits. And I, at this point, I would ask students to try to figure out under what conditions we have an eclipse. Right. For that to happen, either a new moon or a full moon, when the three bodies are aligned, when all those planes coincide. When that happens, we have a very special event called an eclipse. Right? And uh, another very special astronomical event is uh, what's referred to as a blue moon. Uh, now, there are varying definitions of a blue moon, but I certainly encourage you to um, use this TI Inspire document, get some information about today, about um, where we're at in the lunar cycle, and try to figure out when the next blue moon is going to occur. Thanks.